Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chinen Nanta Senamad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this type of content, please consider subscribing. Are you thinking of pursuing a PhD degree or the Doctor of Philosophy program? Or you might be wondering whether the PhD degree is of any benefit to your data science journey or data science career. And so in this video, I'm going to discuss about that point. And so without further ado, let's get started. So before we begin to talk about the topic of this video, so let me bring you back to the time when I was in junior high school, when I was in the eighth grade. So I participated for the first time in the Science Olympiad. So in the Science Olympiad that we participated in, we participated at the regional level, meaning at the Los Angeles district in California. And at the time, I participated in two events. So the first one was about building a bottle rocket. And so the goal of this competition was to use a plastic Coke bottle to build a rocket, which is fueled by water. And so you would pump water inside the bottle rocket. And at the head of the bottle, you would hide a parachute inside. And so the release of the high pressure inside the bottle rocket will make it propel up in the air. And as it goes down, the cap of the rocket will come off, revealing the parachute, which will expand and so the goal of this competition is to have the bottle rocket stay in the air for as long as possible and so the team with the longest air time would win and so our team came in sixth place and so the second competition was to build a wooden tower bridge whereby we will build this tower bridge to be between two table and right at the middle of the tower we're going to tie a string and the string will be tied to a bucket and so we will put in sand inside the bucket and the tower that is able to hold the most sand will win and so our team came in third place and so we got the bronze medal for that event and so it turns out that our team was selected to compete at the state level and so they call this the state finals and so we're representing Los Angeles to compete at the state level which will comprise of other cities in the state of California but unfortunately at the state final we we did not win any competition and so we did not advance further so irregardless of the outcome of this the ambiance of science and the fascination that science has to offer has continued to spark my interest in science and so I returned back to Thailand and I pursued a bachelor's of science degree with a major in biomedical science. And as part of the requirement of the bachelor's degree, we had to carry out a small thesis project. And the thesis project was about studying the diurnal migration patterns of copepods, which is kind of like a small shrimp. And we're studying the diurnal patterns that these copepods has. And so during the daytime, they will be hidden in the depth of the water and at night they would rise up to the surface level and thrive. And so the results of this research project was funded by our university and we were given the chance to present at an international conference on copypod and this is all made possible by my major advisor. And so for the first time, I was given the opportunity to prepare a poster presentation and in doing so, it was my first exposure to the scientific community whereby I was given the opportunity to present my research findings to other scientists in the field. So these scientists are the ones who publish papers in books in prestigious scientific journals that I would read about and I would see them in person at the conference. And so being able to talk to the original authors of the paper that I have read was an awesome experience. And so after graduating the Bachelor's of Science degree, I decided to pursue the PhD degree or the Doctor of Philosophy degree program. And so I did not first start it out in data science. So the PhD research thesis was about the protein engineering of the green fluorescent protein from the jellyfish. And so the goal of the study was to engineer the GFP protein to be able to bind to metal ions. And in response to that, it will have changes to their fluorescence property. So particularly the GFP protein will bind to the metal ion. And in response to that, the fluorescence intensity of the GFP will decline. And so this is called the quenching effect. 
And so in order to create such a engineered GFP protein, I have to study about the effects of the mutation, particularly the mutations of amino acids. And so in nature, there are a total of 20 amino acids, and we use computer software such as PIMO, which is a molecular visualization software, to be able to visualize the crystal structure of the GFP protein and select residues that we believe to be responsible for the fluorescence property. And so in three dimension, the amino acids are interacting inside with other amino acids. And so the mutation of key amino acid will allow us to modulate the fluorescence property. And so at this time, I have not yet been involved with data science. However, that part will come soon. And so at the end of my first year of my PhD study, I had to present my findings at an international conference. And it is at this international conference that I met another researcher who has just graduated his PhD degree from the US on data mining. And so my PhD advisor was acquainted with this researcher and we had a discussion about my research project. Eventually we networked and after the conference, I met the researcher who later became become my co-advisor for my research thesis. And at the time, he gave me this book about neural networks in chemistry. And it was for the first time that I have been exposed to the concept of neural network and about data mining and about making predictions and classifications. And so this was back in the year of 2004. And so in that year, my co-advisor has given me this data set about DNA splice junction site prediction. And so essentially, the goal of this project was to slide through a DNA sequence and upon reaching the splice junction site or the site at which the DNA will be cut, we will look at the environment of the DNA sequence. And so we're going to have a window size at the middle of the sequence that we're looking at, which will have a length of two nucleotide bases. And we're going to have flanking at the left and right to be about three to five nucleotide bases. And so this imaginary window will slide through the DNA sequence one by one in order to generate many possible DNA fragments to be predicted. And so each sliding of the window will generate one set of feature representation. And so we're going to use machine learning to classify whether the particular DNA fragment is containing the DNA splice junction site or not. And so the result of that paper was published in the year of 2005. And so it was my first publication on applying data mining in in predicting DNA splice junction sites. And so notice that back in 2005, this field was called data mining, or another popular term would be knowledge discovery in data. And the go-to resource would be the KDD Nuggets, which is also an excellent source for data science in this day and age as well. And so during the course of the PhD degree, I was involved with a total of nine research projects. And so for each project, it has its own challenges and issues and problems. So each of the nine research projects is in the domain of bioinformatics. And so it is now during the PhD degree, starting from my second year of the PhD degree, where I was working in the field of bioinformatics. And so essentially it is the application of computational approaches, including data science, data mining, on solving biological problems. And so it was very fun, very fascinating. And so the fun lies in the opportunity where we are able to apply computational approaches, particularly I was using data mining to try to understand and make sense of biological data. And so recall that during the first year of my PhD study, I was working in protein engineering where I engineer a mutant GFP protein. And so for the second project of my PhD study, I applied the concept of data mining to predict the colors of the GFP proteins. And so no one has done this before. And so what I did was collect research articles discussing about the engineer of different GFP color variants and I would collect the information about which amino acids were mutated and upon mutation what was the excitation wavelength what is the emission wavelength so the excitation wavelength is essentially you excite the GFP protein by shooting light to the protein and the protein will accept the light and upon accepting the light it will become excited and then during the excited phase 
it will emit energy and as a result it will also emit color and so the process of receiving photon of light and emitting energy and then as a result emitting color as well was a fascinating project for which I was involved with whereby I described the GFP protein in terms of the mutated amino acid and I described the amino acids using quantum mechanics or computational chemistry whereby the chemical functionality of the GFP chromophore can be represented in numerical form as a set of molecular descriptors or a set of molecular features. So essentially we're transforming the GFP molecule into a set of numerical features that we could use as input to the data mining model and make a prediction into what is the excitation wavelength given the quantum mechanic descriptor and also to predict the emission wavelength given the quantum mechanic descriptor. And so this project resulted in about two to three papers. And so other research project as part of my PhD thesis was on applying computational chemistry to compute the molecular features of molecule and then apply data mining to predict the antioxidant activity of a chemical library, which has the capability of becoming an antioxidant molecule. And so during the course of my PhD degree, I was involved with a total of nine research projects. And each research project requires understanding of the biological domain because we have to figure out which molecular features we should select to model or make a prediction about. And it requires reading a lot of literature, becoming acquainted with the domain knowledge on the other end to understand computational concepts, to apply the proper and appropriate machine learning algorithms to do appropriate data cleaning, data curation, data pre-processing. And so back at the time, I was not using any form of programming language. It was purely using text editor such as UltraEdit or Notepad++ and also Microsoft Excel, SPSS to do the statistical analysis and the Weka data mining software to build data mining models such as neural networks, decision tree models, multiple linear regression, support vector machine. And so all of this was built using the graphical user interface of Weka. And so after using this for quite some time, it was becoming quite burdensome to optimize parameters by manually clicking at different step sizes. Because imagine that for support vector machine, let's say that you want to optimize the radial basis function kernel. You want to optimize the C parameter and the gamma parameter. And so imagine that for the C parameter, you want to optimize 10 possible values. And for the gamma parameter, you want to optimize another 10 possible values. Then a 10 by 10 matrix will give you over 100 pairs of parameters to optimize. And imagine that each calculation took about one hour or up to 24 hours, depending on the size of the data set. And so in order to finish the project, we have to do several runs like this. And so back at the time, I was fortunate to have access over the weekend to the computer lab and so over the weekend I would be running calculations using different parameters for the support vector machine or for neural network calculation or with different seat number and so imagine using 50 computers in the computer lab to run the simulation and after the simulation is complete have to manually copy and paste the results into a text file and then copy that into the thumb drive or the USB drive and then consolidate all of the information and so I would remember using macro feature of the text editor in order to pre-process the text results. And so all of this data mining project was without the use of a programming language such as R or Python. Because for a biology major back at the time, learning programming seems very scary. It seems like a formidable task. It seems something that is out of reach. And so at the time, I selected the easy path, which might not be easy if we think of it retrospectively of using only the GUI softwares. And so if I could turn back time, I would probably tell my 2005 version to start learning programming language because of the amazing benefits that it has in helping to analyze big data sets or perform automated and programmatic pre-processing of data and model building in an optimal way, time-efficient way as well. 
And so you can see that during the course of my four years that was spent for the PhD degree, all of the nine research project was about data mining. And all of the project requires understanding the domain knowledge of biology and trying to translate that into meaningful molecular features that we could use to construct predictive model. And after the construction of predictive model, we would try to extract knowledge out of the model, try to interpret the importance of the feature that influence the prediction and so once we understand what features are important we will then use that to guide the experimental process in order to engineer the GFP in a different way depending on which molecular feature that we want to control or exert our control over in order to bring about the different colors and so thinking back how did doing a PhD helped in my data science career as a associate professor of bioinformatics and so so the PhD degree provided me dedicated time to pursue nine research projects. And so I guess if you are able to do data science projects without pursuing a PhD degree, I mean, not only to reproduce toy data set, but to actually and rigorously be involved in or create the data science project from start to finish and have a firm understanding of all the features involved in the model building and its interpretation afterward. And then perhaps it would be equivalent to a PhD degree. And so the thing about a PhD degree it's not the title that we receive after completing the degree. But the most important part of all is the journey. And it is this journey that has taught me about project management, how to split up the research project into fragments. And for each fragment, like for example, data collection, data pre-processing, data understanding, exploratory data analysis, doing due diligence by digging the literature review, downloading thousands of research articles, scanning the results and discussion, looking at all the results table from the paper, compiling data sets manually and if thinking retrospectively if I had a knowledge of either R or Python it would have been so much fun but nevertheless it was still fun and so I was manually copying data from the PDF file and then recording the numbers into the Excel so all of the process from beginning to the end of the research project was done by myself, starting from reading the scientific literature by downloading thousands of research articles, scanning through all of those, collecting the data set manually, and after collecting the data set, figure out how to represent the features that we want to predict and make the prediction. And if the prediction was not good, then hit the books, read more about the literature to understand what went wrong and what feature were we missing which made the prediction bad or poor and then to figure out which features to calculate so as you can see it's about feature engineering and once we have a optimal feature then we saw a dramatic increase in the prediction performance like for example in the GFP project and so the initial model provided a correlation coefficient between the experimental and predicted excitation maxima and emission maxima of about 0.6 and so I hit the books read the research articles and discovered that the GFP chromophore has two anionic states meaning that the structure is different and so what I did was represent the GFP chromophore by two different structure because initially it was represented by one structure and depending on the excitation maxima because the GFP has two peak one at 395 and one at 408 and so the 395 nanometer was the major peak and the 408 was a minor peak and so what I did was depending on whether the GFP chromophore compiled from the paper has excitation maxima at 395 or 408, I would draw the chemical structure differently this time, whereby the one at 395 would be given one chemical structure and the one with 408 would be given a different chemical structure. And so this tweak in the molecular features or by means of feature engineering inspired by reading the literature led to dramatic increase in the prediction performance as observed 
work by the correlation coefficient between the experimental and the predicted values of excitation and emission maxima to be in excess of 0.9. And so as you can see, the performance increased from 0.6 to 0.9. And so this did not happen in a day. It happened over the course of about four months for this research project. And so each research project was done project by project. So the completion of one project will result in preparing the manuscript for publication and sending it off for publication and then starting a next project. And sometimes at one given time, I might be involved in two to three research projects at the same time either collecting my own data set or using a data set collected by a fellow colleague who has done experimental work and then we would use their data set to make the prediction. And so we have to have our domain knowledge, try to understand the biology behind the data set and then try to select appropriate features by performing appropriate feature engineering and then using that for model building. And then after the model has been built, perform post-model analysis try to make sense of the feature and why they contributed to good prediction or bad prediction. And so thinking retrospectively, did the PhD degree help me as a biomedical data scientist? I would definitely say yes, but this is only based on my own story. And so everyone has their own unique circumstances and story. And so in conclusion, will you benefit from doing a PhD? It really depends on your unique circumstances. If your work environment right now is allowing you to pursue independent research projects, something that you could have full control over the entire data mining or data science project, from data collection to feature engineering, to model building, model optimization, deployment, and perhaps writing a technical report of some sort, presenting the findings at conferences or to clients. And so the experience that you would have gained during the course of these research project or industrial project would probably be equivalent to doing a PhD degree. And another good part of doing a PhD degree is the mentor. And so the mentor or the PhD advisor has important and significant role in the success of your PhD degree. And so the mentor is kind of like the coach of a basketball team or the manager of a baseball team or a trainer. So your coach will keep you accountable for the progress of your data science science or research project. And another thing that I liked about doing the PhD degree was the dedicated time that you have. And the flexibility is so immense if you compare it to when you're in undergraduate degree. So you don't have to wake up early like the days of undergraduate. You could wake up anytime you want as long as you have responsibility, right? No one is keeping tabs on you. You can enter the lab whatever time that you want. But the important thing is you have to make progress. And the most challenging part is being accountable for the progress of your research project. Because when we're in undergraduate, we study as a batch, right? So you and your friends will take midterm exam at the same time, have final exam at the same time, right? And so the semester ends at a defined date and begins at a defined date and then you have vacation, right? But then doing a PhD is much more flexible, right? Every day is like the same. And so the challenge is motivating yourself, planning wisely so that you can complete your PhD degree in a reasonable amount of time because the time span varies from three years to up to eight years. And so luckily I was able to complete my PhD degree in four years. And so I received my PhD degree when I was 24 and I received my bachelor's degree when I was 20. And this was partly because I took the California high school proficiency examination, which is the equivalent of a high school diploma. And so I took that when I was 16. And so I entered college at 16. And so at 24, I continued to pursue my journey further in academia and pursue further on bioinformatics research. And so time really flies. Now it's been my 14th year in academia. And over the course of this 14 years, I was fortunate to be given the chance to supervise very bright PhD students, master's students, and undergraduate students. And during the course of this 14 years, and so together, I think more than 40 to 50 students, almost 10 PhD students, and about 10 master's students, and more than 20 to 30 undergraduate students. And also, I was also host to several international students coming from Sweden, Germany, United States, and China. And so aside from having good friends, 
I also was given the chance to also learn from the students as well because each student pursued an independent research project and so I learned from all of their projects and this has given me more chance and opportunity to further expand my knowledge of the field by learning from the students as well as by learning from the research findings that our project took us to. And so personally, if I did not pursue the PhD degree, I'm not sure whether I would be acquainted with my co-advisor who introduced me to this wonderful world of data mining and now called data science. And so I'm forever grateful to my PhD advisors and co-advisors. And so I hope that this video brings value. And if you find it useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe to the channel for more awesome contents on data science. And so as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.